So thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, so please meet uh, Jane. So she has a high-risk pregnancy, and at about 24 weeks, she's on bed rest at the hospital being monitored for uterine contractions. And if you take a, take a look at the look on her face, she doesn't look totally happy. That's in no small part because she's wearing these clunky belts uh, to monitor the uterine contractions and the fetal heart rate. But there's another reason that she doesn't look so happy. And she's worried about what happens after she leaves her 10-day stay at the hospital on bed rest. What happens when she's at home and she has nothing to monitor her? So stories like this are the beginning point years ago that got us interested in being able to envision uh, technologies that perhaps could be wearable, that could be embedded in types of things like clothing or medical adhesives that have the same measurement capability as the clunky things in the technology that could be done in a mobile setting. And so with those thoughts in mind, uh, my research group and I teamed up with some material scientists to try to take that uh, vision into a reality. And after a long process and years of trials and tribulations, we were able to develop a system that looks like this. And so this is a, a flexible patch that you can mount onto your skin. It can bend and stretch naturally with the skin. It's about the thickness of a human hair. And it can be fabricated with the same procedures that are used to make computer chips, except at the very last step, we transfer them from silicon onto a piece of material that naturally interfaces with the human body. It can measure a variety of uh, physiologic processes like temperature, electrical rhythms of the body, movement, etc. And we can engineer these devices to also have wireless capabilities and to have uh, uh, batteries and whatnot. We've developed a, a number of applications for these, uh, including uh, sleep monitoring. And in fact, one of our students who worked on that did her graduate thesis with us is in the audience. Varsha, why don't you wave, wave your hand? Uh, so uh, sleep monitoring, a variety of other applications. And with that in mind, we wanted to see if we could use this in the hospital at UCSD. So back to the pregnancy story, we partnered with some obstetricians and we piloted this technology in the hospital, in particular for pregnant women in labor, as a validation study. So in this picture, you can see the clunky belts on the abdomen, and at the same time, you can see our flexible patches. And what we did is we wanted to take a look at the type of information that comes out of the conventional belts from uterine contractions and fetal heart rate, and compare that to what we estimate with our algorithms and our sensors. So in this picture here, you can see the red signal, is a measurement of the fetal heart rate with the conventional uh, belt technology. And the blue is our estimate from our sensors. So as we started to have um, stories like this that manifested themselves, more and more clinicians wanted to partner with us. But that became a challenge because the way we fabricated these devices was very error prone and cumbersome and had low yield. And who came to our rescue in this case was the nurses that we partnered with. And, in that, and, and more specifically, the nurses were encouraging us to make sure you embed this on the body using the same types of things that we typically use in a hospital, a medical adhesive. So we had the idea of rather than just making sure it's compatible with the adhesive, let's integrate it into the adhesive. And that solved our fabrication problem. And so here you can see that we're peeling off these electrodes from a wafer with a piece of scotch tape. And so our students have also invented ways to take integrated circuits made from people like Intel right here in Santa Clara, and we can embed them inside of our flexible materials that can process data, uh, encode it for wireless transmission. And speaking of wireless, we've also engineered uh, flexible antennas that can be embedded into these adhesives. So all these functionalities can be embedded inside of an adhesive, and with that, we can take this data, we can interpret it, transmit it to the cloud when necessary. Now, another uh, challenge that began to arise is that we have to remember that privacy is an important concern. And after all, if the federal government can be hacked, if the Fortune 500 can be hacked, our doctor can too. So with that in mind, we're actually beginning to develop algorithms that can be embedded, can be in implemented in these chips that can extract uncertainty, and only when something is abnormal is it transmitted to the cloud. And so with that in mind, what we're really trying to create is a picture that looks like this, so that this pregnant woman can be monitored in the comfort of her own home. The information is very reliable and accurate. 
and uh, it can be related to a doctor or a care provider when something abnormal occurs while she still maintains her privacy. So at this moment, we can ask ourselves, so we have technology that serves as the intermediary between the patient and the provider. Everyone live happily ever after, right? Well, uh, not so fast. Uh, we have to remember that uh, not all patients have the same trust in the medical establishment or with insurance companies, which they sometimes lump into the same uh, amorphous entity. For example, Jane here being African-American might not have the time to take off to go to get her prenatal care, nor does she have the best experience when she interacts with the care establishment. So with that in mind, we've really gone out of our comfort zone and we began to think about trusted community, communities that can serve as intermediaries, partnering with churches and thinking about nurses that come uh, from those churches that can serve as health coaches to explain to them the importance of this and to relay information back and forth. And so we're really thinking about these trusted communities to connect the patient and the provider. And lastly, it turns out that insurance companies are increasingly interested about in this because if we think about it, it actually might pay off to pay $1 now for a wearable and a health coach rather than pay $10 later when that baby is born premature and ends up in the neonatal intensive care unit, the most expensive part of a hospital. So with that in mind, that's our story. And I look forward to chatting with you afterwards for anyone who has ideas or wants to ask more questions. Thank you.